Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets and Google Apps Script video in Practical Sheets. Today we are continuing a series of videos regarding serial numbers or code generation. Already done three videos in the past, ranging in complexity, about doing automatic code generation. What do I mean? I have here a list of names. It could be a list of products, it could be a list of sales, any database that requires an ID or a reference code. There are several ways of doing this reference code. The most usual being the manual way, just putting one and two and three and four and uh, maybe this eight. Maybe it's not such a simple number, but a big number like this one or this SKU identification for products or a barcode. So these are the type of codes. We can do it manually. We have already seen in the last videos how to do it with a formula so that this will be one, this will be two, this will be three, this will be four, this will be five, maybe including some text, for example, ref0001. And down, we've even go further separating the codes by category. For example, in this other tab, I could have different customer categories, for example. So in here, I will have a VIP 001, but this won't be VIP 001. This would be frequent or FRE 001. And here it will be new 001 and abandoned, abandoned 001, but this now is frequent. So this will be frequent 002. So how do we do this automatically? We've already doing it, done it with formulas, but if we've done some pretty weird and complex formulas, but I think the best way, the easiest way is to do it with a Google Apps Script code. So this is what we're going to do today. Let's start with a simple one. Here, we're just going to do a consecutive code. We, we could also do it a, a random one like this, um, like what, for example, Sheets does, that every new uh, Google Sheet has this random code generator. This could be the second part or the, or the next part of this project could be doing that, that it may prove a little bit more complicated, but I think we can do it. Okay, so let's begin. So what I will assume here is that we don't have any names yet. I have a clean database that I'm going to start filling out. And what I want is that every time I start filling up a name, then I'm going to start generating a code that will start in number one or in number zero if you want. And then we can get a bit more complex. For now, let's start with simple numbers. So extension subscript, as always, we're going to give it a bit of zoom. We're going to call this function code generator. And I'm going to run this function every time a cell is edited. So what I'm going to ask is in which column did I edit the cell and in which row? For this, I need to know first the cell that was edited or the range. So for this, we're going to go to the method in our spreadsheet service, spreadsheet app service, get active range, which will let me know which is the active cell or range that the user has edited. So let's call this variable or constant active cell. Now that I have my active cell, I can start getting some properties out of it. So the first I just told you is the column. So this will be active column. For this, in my active cell, I can call a series of methods and this method is get column. And the same for the row. Then I can decide in which sheets, specific sheets do I want my code to run. This one, I just wanted to run in this simple, in this tab named simple. So I will also need to know in which sheet I'm on for this. Again, I will call this active sheet and I will ask my active cell, which is the sheet 
that it belongs to with the get sheet method. Finally, I could ask for the active sheet name. Now that I have my active sheet, I would I will say to my active sheet, what is your name? With get the get name method. It may be redundant or not that efficient to store these variables if I'm only going to use them once because I could just call directly this method without having to call the variable. But given that this is an instructional video, I think it, it's easier to understand uh, if I do it this way. It may require more lines of code, but I think it's more readable. And if you're not so used to Upscript code, I think you'll understand it better. So now that I have my four methods, maybe I'll, I'm going to need a more later, but I think with these four I can handle, I will call a conditional function, the, our if function, that is the basic conditional function. What I'm going to do in my if function is ask for the conditions for my code to run or for my uh, code generation to run. So the first one is going to be, let's go one by one, that my column, in this case, it's going to be column number one, so that I have the, the code will appear once I finish typing a name or add a new name. So my active column will be, has to be one, but I need more conditions. When I need more conditions, I'm going to join them with an operator. It can be an AND operator or an OR operator. The AND operator is called with this double ampersand. This means that all my conditions are mandatory. So this must be true and the next one also must be true. So my active row, I want it to be greater than one because I don't want this to run in my by mistake in my header. So active row should be greater than one. This is the second condition. Now I need a third condition and is that my active sheet name is simple. This means that I'm making sure that I'm standing or that the user changed a cell that belongs to the sheet simple. So active sheet name has to be equal to in quotation marks simple. So these are my three conditions for now. I'm going to open a bracket, close, it, and here I will put a comment saying that here is my code generation, my real code generation. Before all this was just the conditions that have to happen for my code generation to run. If not, if for example, someone uh, feels out of date here, or an, in this column E uh, in the cell by cat. So the code will only run these five lines, say this doesn't apply, so stop there. That's it. Now let's go to the real code generation. In this case, I need the second column that is the column where I'm going to put my code. In my case is number two. So now that I have some constants, I have this, the column where I want to apply, the row where I want to apply, the name of my sheet. Now I have a new column that is the column where I'm going to paste or to write the, the reference code. So here it's a good practice to write some constants so that if your column changes or your, the name of your sheet changes, you just change it here in your constant and you don't have to go and look in what line of code should I change this or change this. So we're going to put a constant call, activation column, for example, could be, and this is going to be one, then uh, headers. This is this one, how many headers do I want for my code to not apply? Uh, even though in database um, logic and standards, we should only have one row of headers, in Sheets and in Excel, it is used to, uh, for, from some users, to have two or three or maybe five headers. Maybe you have the logo of your company and then you have the date and whatever. And your your real database starts in the 
line five or six or seven. Okay, so this is for just changing. If you have three lines of headers, then you change this for three. Then uh, the name of your sheet, where it's going to be activated, activation sheet name to be. In my case, it's simple. Finally, now we need another column that is the code call, where, where the code is going to be generated. So code call, and in my case, it's going to be number two. And now, down here, I'm going to change this. Let's get out of my zoom a bit. I'm going to change this for my uh, the constants I just created. So activation call. This will be headers. This will be activation sheet name. And, uh, and that's it for now. Again, now, if you start from my template, or you want to apply this to a specific project of yours, then you're just going to change these four lines. The other ones, you shouldn't change them at all, unless you're going to, to use this as a starting template and you're going to do some major changes to, to the code. So now, what I want to do is take my code call and just write a code in there. That's it. So for this, we're going to go to our active sheet, use the get range method. I already know in which row I'm at, so I need first my row. In the get range method, there are many ways of doing the get range. When we're going to target a specific cell, we just need the row and then the column. So our row is going to be the active row, that's the row where the user did the change. And for my column, we're going to use the code call. Now we're going to set a value. For now, let's start with number one. And that's it. Finally, I need to make this code generator execute uh, automatically or without me having to come here and running it. But I'm, I haven't run it the first time. So let's go step by step. I'm going to save. I'm going to stand here in the A2 column in my simple tab. And I'm going to run my code generator. The first time I run it, I'm going to be asked for some permissions. I'll click review permissions. I'll go to my account, Google account. This will always appear. So I will say advanced and go to my untitled project. Actually, this is a bad practice. I should, I should have named my project. So for now, just allow it. That's it. I'm going to now change the name or code generator. And here I have my one, but let's do it again. Let's run. And here it automatically put the one. Okay, so now let's make this run automatically. For this, I'm going to put it inside an unedit function. This is what is called simple trigger. This reserved name in Google Apps Script, the unedit, tells Google Sheets that it should run whatever is inside this unedit function every time something is edited. Some, some cell in my worksheet is written down or modified or deleted. So I'm just going to run my code generator function inside my unedit. Make sure you put the parentheses. Let's save. Now I just need to put here Pedro and it's working because it's putting the number one. This is not what I want, the number one, but it's working because it is running the function. So I just need to do some changes here below this. So this value is what I need to change. So I'm going to call this instead of one, I'm going to call this code. And now this is where it gets a bit tricky because I need my code to look up and see which is the, the previous code. So I'm going to delete this, delete this, and delete this. I'm going to delete this two, this four. Okay, so I want, when I put Pedro here, this looks for the cell up and just add one number to it. That's it. 
So code, my variable code will be active sheet get range. It's not my active row, but my active row one up of my active row. So I will say active row minus one. And the code call. And I will get the value that is stored there. And I'm going to add one to it. So that's it. Let's save. And I'm going to write Pedro. And number two, and then Maria. It's number three, and then Sebastian. And it's number four. Okay? So it apparently works. What happens when um when I'm at the first row? So I'm going to delete this and delete this and delete this again. But you already saw uh, a preview of what's going to happen. What if I say one? So it's going to say code one that I don't like it. So I just want the number one. So I can do an if an if function, another if, and say that if my active row is number two, so this is our first row, actually it will be headers plus one. So the, the first row with data, if active row equals to headers plus one, in my case is number two, but in your case it may be number three, number four, number five. If this happens, then my variable code should be one. If not, that it, I do it with an else. If this is not true, then just do the code we already did. That is just look at the one row up from the one I'm editing and just add one. So this should work. Let's save. And again, I'm going to delete here. Here I have an error and we'll, we'll just uh, check it now. So let's put one again. And it's number one, and then Maria, number two, and then Pedro, number three. So on and on and on. Okay, so it works. I have one one error, and it's what happens if I delete this. It's a minor thing, but if I delete this and then delete this, it again generate my code. So then I need another variable here that is my active value. My active value is going to be the active cell. And I'm going to get the value of it. If if it's empty, if I deleted it, then it should it shouldn't do anything. So this is my fourth condition, and my fourth condition is that active value is something. It is different than empty. Okay? So let's save again. So if I delete this here, and I could also say that it should delete my code uh, if this happens, if you want, but for now. I just want it that if I delete it, I don't create a new number. If I delete here and then delete here, then nothing happens. But if I put another one, it starts generating. Okay, and if I delete this one and delete this one, nothing happens. Okay, so I thought I'm, I was going to advance a bit more, but I think this is a good start. We are generating automatic codes. There are many things we can do uh, starting with this. We can add letters before that there are some things to fix here because this what happens is that if, if I reorder this code, for example, if I am going to order this from C to A, and what happens if I add a new one here? Let's remove this and add a new one here. It will repeat a number because it's going up and adding an one. So it actually should look for the maximum code. But I'll leave this for the next video. If you like this, just let me know and we'll, we'll start developing the new videos of this series. I think we can go much more deep and advanced. And if you liked it, please subscribe to the channel, hit on the notification button so that you know every time there's a new video, hopefully one or two videos a week. And if you don't want to copy this code manually, but just want to start with a with a proven template, then you can go to my Patreon page and then you can find the template not only to this video, but for all the videos in the channel. Thank you so much and see you next time.